Hello everybody, I'm going to do a quick question on the bill of materials and the time phase product structure from MRP. This is a chapter that's not included in your books, but if you can somehow get a hold of it, that'd be great. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to do um, problem number, let's see, 13.3 from page number 556. All right, so this is one of your uh, book problems. So let me read the question out. The demand for service assembly S is 100 units in week 7. <clears throat> so what they're trying to ask you is, or basically the the requirement is to produce 100 units of S by week 7. Uh, each unit of S requires one unit of T and two units of U. Each unit of T requires one unit of V, two units of W, and one unit of X. Finally, each unit of U requires two units of Y and three units of Z. Uh, one firm manufactures all items, okay? So we can get all of them, all of them from one company, I guess. It takes two weeks to make uh, S, one week to make T, two, units, two weeks to make U, two to make V, three for W, one for X, two for Y, and one week to make Z. So these are your lead times given below, all right? The question requires you to construct a product structure, identify all levels, parents, and components. So this is basically asking you to construct a bill of materials, chart, and exactly how much of each component you need, all right? The next part of the question is asking you to prepare a time phased product structure. Uh, this is basically a lead time chart like the one I showed you guys in class. Uh, the easiest way to start off this question is to construct a table with uh, predecessors and uh, lead times, which is not necessary, uh, but if you do do it, it uh, allows you to. Uh, or it, basically lowers your chance of making a mistake by quite a bit. So the table will look as such, all right? So uh, let's say here, component S, uh, the predecessors are T and U, and I'm getting this from uh, the highlighted red part of the question. Similarly, T requires V, uh, one of V, two of W, and one of X, as uh, given in the question above. And uh, it's similar for U. And the lead times I'm getting from the lower half of the question, which is quite self-explanatory, I think. All right. So once we have a table like this, it's much more easier to tackle this question. So let's get started with the bill of materials. I'm going to put the table on the side, and let's look at the bill of materials. Uh, so the question requires us to create or produce 100 units of S. All right. So we start off with S. The predecessors for S are one unit of T and two units of W. R U, sorry. So it'll look something like that. Okay. Um, next off, we have T with predecessors V, W, and X. So it would look something like that. Similarly, for U, uh, it requires two units of Y and three units of Z. So there we go. So that's basically the product. Uh, so that's basically the product structure or chart that shows. Uh, something like that. So this is the bill of materials that you might have to construct. Next off, uh, we need to calculate how much of each component we need, right? So the question is asked us to create 100 units of S. So for that, we need 100 units of T, since uh, you need one T per S. And two, since we need two uh, component U's for each S, we need a total of 200 units of U. Similarly, for the third uh, level, we have, uh, we need 100 units of T, right? So we need one T, one V for each T, so we need 100 units of V. Similarly, we need 100 units of T, and we, we basically need two units of W for each T, so it's going to be 100 times 2, that basically comes to 200 units of W. Similarly, 100 units of X. And we need two units of Y for each unit of W, or each unit of U. So since we need 200 U's, uh, we need 200 times 2, or 400 units of Y. Similarly, we since we need three units of Z for each unit of U, we will need three, 600 units of Z. All right, so that's your um, bill of materials. OK, for the time phase uh, product structure, uh, first off, we start with an axis. Uh, instead of uh, having it on the, the left-hand side, we have the y-axis on the right-hand side. 
um, like such. All right. So first, uh, we label them. Uh, we label the x-axis with units, which correspond to the lead times. So first off, we draw uh, the, the the end component that we need to make, which is S. And the length of the uh, the line in S uh, represents the lead time, as you can see here. And then, uh, since S requires T and U, uh, the the chart is going to look something like that. Okay, since U U has a lead time of two uh, weeks and uh, T has a lead time of one week. T is half of uh, the length of U. Now T has can be further be divided into three components: uh, V, W, and X, and it's going to look like that. Since W has a lead time of three, it's going to be significantly longer than uh, X, as you can see here. And similarly, uh, Y and Z are the components of U, and their lengths represent the lead time. Now, once we get that, uh, we just mark the the last part of the chart or the end or the leftmost uh, part of the chart and this is what it is right here in this particular case and that would be the starting point to mark our axis so we start labeling them like that so we now know that we should complete our um, our assembly of product S by the end of week 6 All right. So yeah, it's pretty simple. So if you still have any questions regarding this, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments or message me on Facebook or something like that. All right, cheers.